Thanks, Jeremy. Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, super game, uh, fun for our guys. You, you always talk about the fourth quarter and you always talk about the importance of the fourth quarter and to, to outscore a, a top 10 team 24 to seven in the fourth quarter is, uh, is really cool. And it's, it's great for your program moving forward. It's, uh, it's something you can build on. Um, and we were so good in the fourth quarter our first year and then kind of good and bad last year. And, and uh, hopefully now we're getting that back. It talks about conditioning. It talks about confidence. Um, and and uh, Wake Forest is a really, really good football team. Uh, so to be able to accomplish that against them was even more impressive. And um, somebody, I, I think it was Booger McFarlane, was laughing at me. He says, you say the polls aren't important, and then when you beat somebody, they are important. And uh, uh, the truth is the preseason polls aren't important. That they're, nobody's earned the rights. By now, Wake Forest had earned the right to be in the top ten. So when the college football pol poll comes out um, in November, uh, I'm all in. Uh, I think whether we think somebody should be sixth or fifth, uh, all of the teams that are ranked have earned the right to be ranked. So uh, I do believe that. Uh, Preseason polls I've, I've, have always uh, fought with your team and your fans and, and, and said that they're just not realistic because we're guessing. We don't even know who, who's on your team. We don't know what kind of spring practice you had. Uh, so that, that's... Uh, just not part of it. Uh, players of the game, Cam Kelly was the defensive player of the game. Uh, we, we knew uh, they, after they forced a turnover the first play of the game, they were plus 11 in turnovers, we were minus one. Uh, that's one of the things that Wake Forest had done so well during the season and we ended up getting two interceptions with Cam, which was uh, a lot because of pressure by our front. And then we were able to get two fourth down stops. Uh, so really that's four turnovers to, to the one because we were one for one on fourth down and, and we had the, uh, the controversial turnover on the first play of the game. Uh, so um, uh, Cam Kelly was the player of the game. Uh, Storm Duck played really well. I'm, I'm amazed and uh, some of this we, we talked about after the game but now I've had a couple of days to look at it. Uh, it's really uh, amazing how well he played after not playing for nearly two years. And uh, I'm, I'm proud for him. It also shows how talented he is. Uh, because he had no practice. He, he practiced last week, maybe for the first time in, in about a month. So uh, he was a, a difference. Uh, our defensive front stepped up and, and put pressure on the quarterback. And, and that's so important when you're playing Wake because they run the ball so well. And it's hard to get to the quarterback because of the nature of their offense because you have to stop the run and then you're not in a position to pass rush. But the other thing we were able to do, we're, we're tall, uh, and we were able to bat some balls down. Um, so that really, really helped us in, in some of the, um, uh, the fourth quarter uh, things that came through. Uh, Jeremiah Gimmel coming out of the game early really hurt us. Uh, it's, uh, he's the leader. Uh, he, he's the guy. Uh, he's, he's like the coordinator out there. Uh, and he's probably our best defensive player. Um, really, really proud of, of Power Eccles coming in and, and doing what he did. Um, Tommy Thigpen's done a good job of coaching when uh, Eugene Asante can come in the bowl game and, and play well after uh, we lose Chaz Surratt. And then uh, Saturday to have a true freshman come in and, and play, especially against a very unconventional offense, uh, was, was impressive. And we're really, really proud of power. I do think that college football it needs to change the targeting rule. I understand why it's in if it saves one young person from from having a, a serious head or, or spine injury, it's worth it. Uh, but uh, the, the hit that Jeremiah had, uh, the, the, there's a lot of inconsistency in what targeting is right now. I can't tell anymore. It's kind of like pass interference and holding. It, it's very, very inconsistent. So when you take a, a guy who is, is sliding or going down and your guy comes in and hits him, it wasn't a flagrant foul. He, he didn't hurt him. He wasn't trying to hurt him. Uh, so if, if you want that to be targeting, uh, give somebody 15 yards. But don't take a guy out of the game uh, for making a good tackle. And, and I think that, that has got to be changed. Um, if it's a flagrant foul, 
uh, like the one we, we had at uh, Virginia uh, against, against uh, an unprotected player, or it looks like somebody was trying to take somebody's head off, um, sit them out. We, we used to send them into the locker room, which was awful, and now we're at least letting them stay on the field. But, but that rule needs to be changed. Uh, just uh, it, 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 it continues to keep the safety, but doesn't take a guy like Jeremiah Gimmel out of the game when he doesn't have uh, many games left. The other thing he did, he didn't gripe about the call. He didn't yell at the officials. He didn't throw his helmet. He took his jersey off he, he or he took his shoulder pads off, and he coached his rear end off the whole game. I'm so impressed with him. He, he, just, he, he was picking people up and being positive, and um, he is a, a, a great young man. I know after he gets through with pro ball, he wants to coach. Uh, he will be a great coach. Uh, just, again, watching him on Saturday and, and watching the way he went through. Um, Ty Chandler is the offensive player of the game. Uh, Ty um, is getting better each week. He, he's showing his quickness and his speed, and uh, he's got more patience now. I think he's, he's in tune with the offensive linemen. He has good chemistry with them now. He's understanding the offense because it's different from what he ran at Tennessee. Um, so uh, he, he's had uh, three or four great weeks in a row, uh, but he's a factor now. And, and has the speed to go score. The last touchdown was really, really impressive that he broke some tackles and made some people miss him. And he's got the ability to, to get the jump start like uh, Michael Carter and then hit the, the ground going and, and uh, go full speed after he, he goes sideways. So I uh, also felt like the offensive line played really, really well. Uh, you can't rush for 330 yards uh, again against a top 10 team without them playing well. Uh, and and I, I, I liked our offense getting back on track. We, we were able to use the outside receivers. I think they caught eight balls. Still getting the ball to the tight ends um, and, and doing some good things in, in that area. Uh, offensively, we, we're still, I'm still not happy with our short yardage uh, and red zone offense. We, we score 58 points. It's, it's a great day for the offense. We still messed up some third and ones, two or three of them. Uh, we, we had a second and two at the goal line when Sam got hurt. We didn't score. We needed a touchdown there. We didn't need to kick a field goal. And we had another opportunity first and goal at the six, um, and, and we end up kicking a field goal. So we, we've got to do a better job in, in red zone offense, scoring touchdowns and, and instead of field goals and, and making sure that we, we continue to do that. Uh, we talked about the, uh, the difference in the ball game being the turnovers. It's not only the turnovers, but... Our offense scored 14 points off the turnovers. Our defense helped Wake Forest after they got their turnover. So we gained 14 points after turnovers. Wake Forest only gained three uh, after their turnover. And I, I do think that was the, the difference in the ball game moving forward. Um, I, I was really, really proud of our, our students um, coming on the field after the game. It was really cool. They're having fun. Uh, you can, you, they've been that way all year. They're, they're just, they're, they're enjoying the games, they're making a difference, um, and, and it, it was no harm. Uh, nobody got hurt, and they, they were just having a blast, and it was really cool, and it, it does affect recruiting. Those recruits were loving it, and our players walked back out and talked to them and, and, and saw them, and, and um, uh, nothing wrong with a, a, a college student having great fun and clean fun, and, and I, I appreciated it so much. And, and now we're 13-5 and five in Keenan. And, and uh, I give the students a lot of credit for um, keeping our guys pumped up and, and uh, moving forward. Uh, defensively, we had the, um, the, the two interceptions. We had the stops. Still giving up too, much, uh, too many big plays. We give up a third and 16. We, we give up a third and 10. We give up a second and 20 on a handoff. So uh, we're, we're doing some good things defensively, and then we just we're too inconsistent. We cannot continue to give up big chunk plays, uh, most of them in the passing game. And Wake Forest got a really good offense, and I give them credit. And they're hard to stop, and they put you in one-on-one -on -one situations with wide receivers, and, the, and they make plays. Uh, but uh, we, we've got to get better in those areas, and, and we need to get better fast. Um, so, so really defensively, we've, we've got to limit the quarterback runs, which everybody's having trouble with. Nobody stops Sam, but we also have to limit the explosive plays. They had nine explosive plays, and we had six, and, and that's just entirely too many. Now, we missed very few tackles, 
and they missed 16. So uh, there, there are a lot of good things that are happening. We're getting better. We're growing. Uh, but we, we've got to um, change some things in those areas to, to get better and, and, and do it quickly. Uh, we talked about Sam Howell. Uh, really cool for him to, to be the uh, leading yard uh, getter, gainer in, uh, in North Carolina history. And that's really cool. And in and, and three years, less than, less than three years. Uh, so good for him and, and all he's meant to our program uh, moving forward. Uh, Josh Downs went over 1,000 yards. Uh, we, we've talked about the loss of the guys last year. Uh, Josh has uh, done a tremendous job of stepping in and, and helping with some of that 4,200 yards that, that are gone. And that he didn't get the ball as much on Saturday and still had a great attitude and, and uh, was very, very positive. Uh, Ty Chandler scored four touchdowns for the first time since 1993 with Leon Johnson. Uh, so that's a, a cool stat for him, too, and, and uh, really fun for uh, me and the guys that were around here at that time because uh, Neon Leon Johnson was a, a special player for us, and, and uh, it's fun to go back and, and talk about all the things he accomplished. Um, the game was uh, a chippy game. There's a lot of talking and pushing and shoving back and forth. Uh, I'm sure Coach Clawson would tell you the same thing, but it's just uh, too many penalties. And, and we got to stop. I said, act like you're, you're doing something good. We, uh, we take our helmets off when we, when we go ahead in a game. Um, somebody mouths to us, we mouth back. Uh, we push and shove. Uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's uncharacteristic. It's not a disciplined team when you do those things, and, and it got us in trouble. Um, it, it forced us to, uh, to kick a deep squib kick from the 20-yard uh, line uh, when the game should have been over because Jonathan would have kicked it out. And uh, some people have asked, why did you squib instead of kick it deep? If you kick it deep, they got a better chance to return it for a touchdown. They got good field position with the squib. We'd like for the squib to have been deeper. Uh, but you, you don't kick it off deep uh, when your guy can't kick it out. Uh, because you had the 15-yard the penalty. So uh, we're not good enough to do those things. We, we've got to quit that. Uh, the special teams player of the game was Grayson Atkins. He's really done a good job this year with his extra points and his field goals. And we even had another penalty that shoved us back uh, for a longer extra point. Uh, but those points really, really mattered uh, as the game got down to the end. Uh, Pittsburgh's got a really good team. It's a short week, so I've told the guys it's like the NFL. You you play on Sunday, you play again on Thursday, so um, they're not going to have a lot of time to get some physical stuff done. We had a long game on Saturday. We had a lot of plays that we played. It was a very physical game, um, so we, we've got to get ready to go. And um, uh, Coach Narduzzi's done a super job, I thought, when he hired, hired Mark Whipple. Mark's one of the better offensive coordinators in the country, and you can see the results just by what he's done with Kenny Pickett, who's now thrown for over 3,000 yards and 29 touchdowns and three interceptions. So again, on Thursday night, fans will be uh, privileged to see two of the best quarterbacks in, in college football. So it, it should be a lot of fun to, to watch that. Um, we've said it before, but three games against uh, ranked teams, two of them on the road in 13 days, uh, that's a load. So I told our guys, it's time to grow up. Um, it is what it is. Um, so you, you need to handle it and move forward. Uh, Jordan Addison is, is one of the best receivers in the country. Uh, the guy's over 1,000 yards, 11 touchdowns, so he's a handful, and, um, and we've given up too many big plays. Uh, and defensively, they're, they're giving up 22 points a game. Uh, their defensive line is the strength of their team. Uh, they're they're uh, second in the uh, a conference in, in sacks, and they're only giving up 108 yards rushing. So um, that... that uh, all those things will be tough for us. They've got 31 sacks and 58 tackles for a loss. So uh, we haven't played as well on the road. We're playing against a great quarterback that can run and throw, and we haven't stopped either consistently. Um, we've been able to run the ball better the last few weeks, but they're one of the best in the country at stopping the run. Uh, and um, <coughs> since we've been here, we haven't been consistent at uh, – at protecting our quarterback. So we've got a lot of things that we've got to do better on Thursday night to win than, we, than we've done. Questions, Mark? Thanks, Coach. Uh, first question today will come from Dina King. Go ahead. Hey, Coach. You mentioned Kenny Pickett, one of the best in the country. What makes him such a special quarterback? Dana, he's gotten better since we played him three years ago because he's uh, 
he, he, he's hard to keep in the pocket. And the best quarterbacks in the country, when they get out of the pocket, have the ability to run, or when you come up, throw it over their head. And, and with the 29 touchdowns and, and four interceptions, I think, three or four, he's very, very accurate. And he's confident. And because so many people are stealing signals across the country, and, which is another thing we need to change, in college football, we need to give the ability, like the NFL, for the coordinator to talk to the quarterback or coordinator to talk to the linebacker so we don't have all this talk about stealing signals all the time. Um, Pitt actually, uh, the quarterback goes to the sideline to talk to Mark every play. Um, so that's unique and different, but um, I'm, I'm sure that's why they do it. Uh, but uh, very confident. Uh, they've got an older team. Uh, again, all the... Super seniors and the guys coming back really, really helped them. They're a confident team. Uh, they beat Clemson a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but, but it's all, uh, like Sam for us, it's all about Kenny. Uh, Kenny's their leader. Uh, he's the guy that uh, scores a bunch of points. Or they're scoring 40-something points a game. Um, so that's just a, another part of, of what they're doing that's so successful. Thank you. Thank you. Luciano, go ahead. Thank you, Lord. hope you're doing well, and thanks for your time this morning. What do you say the division is still up for grabs with a win on Thursday? I'm sorry, I, I lost you there. What do you say the division is still up for grabs with a win on Thursday? Yeah, the, the thing we've got to do is, is just keep playing. We, we, we've been so up and down. We've been so inconsistent. It, it's about finishing strong as a program. Because we, we said the other day, uh, the only things that are important to us right now, we, we'd like to uh, have the seniors get in a perfect position to, to win as many games as they can because they've, they've been so good with us coming into this program three years ago with five wins in two years to where they, they've gone to two straight bowls. We need to, we need to get those seniors to a bowl. Uh, we need to finish as strong, but we've got to keep improving as a football team. And, and then um, all the other stuff is out of our control. We've got to win another game to go to a bowl. Uh, we've got to be as good as we can. Uh, but we don't need to be talking about the end. Uh, we need to be talking about getting better. And, and that's what we are. Because this, this has been a year where uh, the talk was better than our team. And our team's getting better. And we're showing progress. And we're improving in a lot of areas. We've got a lot of great young players. And, and we're going to sign a bunch more. Um, but our program uh, needs to step up, and, and that's what needs to happen over the next three weeks. Over to Andrew Jones. Hey, Coach, going back to Pitt uh, offensively, they're among the top teams in the country with big plays. They're among the top teams in the country in first downs. I think the first in first downs. So they're able to move the ball in a variety of ways, big plays, chunks, grind it out. Where does it start when you have to face a club that could do so many things, get so many guys touches like they do? Where, where do you start when you, when, you have, when you game plan how to stop a club like that? Yeah, Andrew, you go back to our last uh, three games. Miami's moving the ball against everybody, and that young freshman quarterback's really got a chance to be a superstar moving forward. Uh, Notre Dame is, is a really good offensive team. Uh, and then Wake Forest is as good as anybody in the country, what they were averaging, 43 points a game, I think. Uh, but you, you start at the same place every week. you got to stop the run, and when you stop the run, try to put pressure on the quarterback and, and, and keep him in the pocket and give him as many different looks as you can and just disrupt him some. And, and that's, what, uh, that's just basic fundamental football that you have to do each week. And uh, Pitt runs it better than you think. Uh, because they've got the big, strong offensive line up front. Uh, but if, if you allow somebody to do both, uh, you've, you've got no chance. So you've got to stop one and, and then try to keep the guys in front of you. And, and what we've got to do, Andrew, is we've got to limit explosives. We can't have people just throwing it over our head. And, and, and to do that, we, we've got, uh, until we do that, uh, you've got to put enough in the box to stop the run. You're going to have some man-to-man -man situations and, we always talked about that at one time being 50-50, and now it's got to be 80-20 for you to win games. And those corners have got really, really hard jobs and those safeties. And um, until we get that done, uh, we're, we're going to be disappointed. 
going back to Storm Duck, Jeremy had told us for a few weeks leading up to this past week that he was doing some stuff, but it was obviously a wait and see situation. How much work did he get before this last week? And you can, can you quantify really how amazing the performance he put on, given the fact that he's played, what, the BC game? He hadn't played since the BC game except a few snaps. No, it's, uh, it's absolutely amazing. I didn't know that he would play on Saturday. Poor Jeremy's been in a tough spot every time he sees you all saying, Storm may play. It'll be a game-time decision for, for the last 16 games or 18 games. And what he, <clears throat> excuse me, what he would do is he would do some things in individual, but he practiced very little. I mean, it's absolutely amazing to see how well he played and the confidence he played with with, with uh, the limited amount of practice he's had. So I'm very, very impressed. I, I think that the, the only way to answer it, Andrew, is he's really good because for him not to practice and come out with that confidence. Now, he, he was in shape. He's been, he's been running as much as he could um, and, and, and stayed in, in great shape um, and played a lot Saturday. So, uh, but he, he's a, a huge part of who we are here as we finish the season. He's, he's got to take one of those places. We, we forget sometimes uh, Tony Grimes is like a freshman. That's his age. He, he came in as a high school senior. Um, so we all want Tony to be perfect. Uh, we want Kyler McMichael, who came in from Clemson, to be perfect. And then Storm's in there because we've lost Don Chapman, who really hurt us. And, and it, it, it hurt us to lose him. And, and Don's so tough and so committed. He gets hurt early in the game at, at Notre Dame and doesn't tell anybody. And, and plays the whole game with, a, with obviously, a, uh, a bad situation in his leg. Um, and then you lose DeAndre Hollins, who, who was playing much, much better. So Storm is an absolute savior uh, coming in at this time of the year. We were down to two corners uh, that, that have any experience at all. So uh, this is a, a huge lift for us the last three games. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Coe, go ahead. Hey coach, so Thursday night's gonna be the first time that you've played on a natural grass field since week one against Blacksburg. And of course, Thursday night in Pittsburgh, that's gonna be a really, really tough surface. How much does the playing surface go into game planning and play calling for you guys? Michael, it doesn't have anything to do with game planning and we're lucky, our, our facilities are so good. We practice on grass this week. So anytime we're playing on grass, we practice on grass. So it affects your kickers more than anything else. Uh, so we kick today on, on grass this morning. Uh, but every day, we, we alternate every other day for sure, but every day people are on the grass. And, and unlike the old days, you wear the same shoes. Um, I, I really don't think it, it makes that big a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Josh Graham, go ahead. Hey, Coach, i got a couple things here. You already faced Armstrong and Hartman, and now you got Pickett this week, including your guy. How rare is it for one conference to have so much talent at that position at one time? Josh, I was talking to our staff about that yesterday. I, I haven't been able to study it all, all across the country, but I would have to think that the ACC's got the best quarterbacks in the country. And, and, and therefore, we can score points in this league and, and move fast. Uh, but I would have to think that. I mean, the guys you mentioned are absolute superstars. And then there's a few others that we could probably throw in there that are going to be. Uh, but this, this league is, is absolutely full of quarterbacks and uh, makes it a nightmare for defensive coaches. But uh, it's, it's fun to watch. And going back to the students running on the field, when's the last time you remember being in a game where that's happened to you? And do you remember it ever happening in Chapel Hill? Um, Josh, I, I, I'm, I'll get my dates confused here and somebody could help me. It happened when we upset Georgia Tech. And I think they were a top 10 team and the students rushed the field and they tore down the goalpost. They took the goalpost down to uh, uh, Franklin Street. And I got in trouble because the next time we had a home game, I, I said something like, uh, come on, students, let's, let's win, and you tear down the goalpost again. So Chancellor Harden called me in and said, uh, that's very dangerous. Don't be encouraging those students to go tear down the goalposts. So, and now I think they're retractable, and they go down real fast. Uh, but, but like I said, I, I, I thought it was fun. What these players are doing is building memories, uh, good and bad, um, for the rest of their lives. And, and as, 
Natron Mean sat in there the other day and, and said, yeah, when we played Duke in 90, and then he said the Wake Forest game in 90, and I told the, the players, you, you'll be telling these stories when, you're, when he's 49. So you're 49 sitting around with your buddies, and your best friends will be the guys in this room. You're going to be talking about the Wake Forest upset over a top 10 team uh, where the students stormed the field and how cool it was. And, and again, you, you just can't imagine what it does for recruiting. Those recruits want to see uh, situations like that where they, they can be in the middle of that crowd. And I, I don't know how much, but some of our players went back out and, and said thank you and got around the students. And it was just a, it was really a cool moment. And it's, it's not one that you, you uh, uh, can make happen. It just has to happen. And it's pretty magical. And, and I, I thought it was really, really cool. It, it was fun to, fun to see our students have that much fun. Thank you, Josh. All right, let's go over to C.L. Brown. Hey, Mac, uh, you were kind of alluding to it with the secondary, but I wondered what, what does it say to you about, you know, the, the depth that you guys have developed, that you could have Hollins and Chapman go down and, and Duck not having played a, a whole lot this season be able to step in, just kind of the, the mixing and matching. I mean, we started off the season, Kelly wasn't even in the starting lineup in the secondary. Now he's also making big plays for you guys. Yeah, CL, it, it's, a, it's a great point. Uh, the, the best programs in the country have depth. And we're not there yet, but we're heading there fast. And the other thing that, that's, we've had so many defensive backs hurt since we've been here. It's, a, it's unusual. I'm, I'm, you just go back and look at uh, who's missed time. Uh, but Jay and Dre have done a good job of cross training too because Chapman could go out to corner when he was one of our best safeties. And then he had gone to nickel. And, and one of the problems we've had back there, we've played everybody in so many different places. We've still got a cross train, but we got to get settled. We, we got to be who we are so uh, we, we don't continue to have mistakes. Um, and I think the second thing's going to happen, CL, is the, the transfer portal has changed everything. It's just crazy. So if you're, if you're going to keep the guys that are here, it's going to be one of two things, and I'm talking about everybody in the country. Either you've got older guys and younger guys, and you're beating people badly enough, everybody gets to play. And then everybody's happy, and mom's happy, and the morale's good, and you're starting to develop depth, and you've got the next guys ready to play when somebody gets hurt. And you'll have fewer people hurt because they play less plays. Right now, we've got to look at next year because we're not consistently good. And we haven't beaten anybody badly. Uh, maybe Georgia State, we got a few people in. Uh, but you don't get to play your backups. And, and the defensive line, we're rotating them. We're rotating some in the offensive line. But uh, just like the young linebackers, Ra Ra's not playing uh, a lot. They're all on special teams. And uh, Power hadn't played any uh, until he, except that one game until he goes in Saturday. So I've talked to our staff. I really think we're going to have to look at playing too deep and we, we did this at Texas when we got better. And, and uh, maybe every third series, just start another team and put them in there. Uh, and that's the only way people are going to stay. If they, uh, they either want their degree or they're going to want to play. So we're all having to look at what the transfer portal is going to do to your roster management moving forward. And how do we coach differently than, than in the past? So uh, just to clarify, you're not you going to do that to close out this season, or you're just saying in no. the future you might have to do this? No, I, I think it's, it's something that we have to look at as a staff moving forward. I've always wanted to play too deep. Uh, and, that, and, and when we've had our best teams, we've, we've been able to do that. Or like when we, we had the number one defense in the country when I was here before, we played four linebackers for three spots. And they all knew what to do, so we just rotated them. And, and we didn't have a, a fifth and sixth linebacker at that time, but we had four that could play three positions. Um, so what we've got to do is look at um, how, how are you going to develop depth and how are you going to keep a lot of, we're, we're recruiting really well. How are you going to keep a high level of recruits happy unless they play? Uh, so that's just something that you, uh, I tell you all too much. I tell you everything's on my mind, but. Uh, so don't, don't try to make this something bigger than it is. But it's a thought moving forward that we all have to look at uh, to see 
how you, you keep your people here. Thanks, Coach. It's never too much, man. Let, we, we enjoy your insight. Thanks, CL. All right, our last question for Coach Brown today will come from Ross Martin. Hey, Coach. Um, uh, Coach Bateman was in the uh, box calling down the plays, I guess, on Saturday. I was wondering what went into that decision. Was it your call? Was it his call? And how do you think it affected uh, the defensive play calling or getting the plays in, whether, whether they're good or bad, or how you saw that from your perspective? Yeah, Ross, he'll be here in a minute, so he can talk to you more about that, obviously. But uh, he came to me, and um, we, we obviously need to play better on defense. And, uh, again, we're just uh, we're so inconsistent. We play great and then just give up a, a third and 16. And that's when you're supposed to have your turnovers. That's your interception. That's your tip ball. That's your sack. Uh, so that's where we've got to improve. And he felt like that he uh, uh, it wasn't working well, so let's get up there so I can see better. And I can see exactly what's happening. And to his credit, uh, they made tremendous adjustments the second half and in the fourth quarter did enough things to win the game defensively. And that, that really helps us. Um, the, the other part of that is you um, getting the, <coughs> excuse me, getting the defenses in faster. There were two or three times on short yardage they caught us. Uh, and it takes a little bit longer from up there to down here to get it in. So. Uh, when you lose the Jeremiah Gimmel, you normally have a call on the field that you just line up and get ready for the third and one or get ready for the fourth and one. Then if they look to the sideline, you look to the sideline and then you check to another defense, but you've got a defense ready. And um, without Jeremiah out there, we, we got caught a couple of times not being ready on short yardage, and that's something that we've got to fix. All right, Coach, thanks for uh, a few minutes this morning. Thank you all, and I will, short week, I will see you at Pittsburgh or see you after the game on Zoom. Travel safe if you're going up.